Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com free. You can create data groupings on the data in reports. This allows you to group fields that contain the same value, much like we did grouping within a query. It's the same exact function. You can then calculate the value of another field based on each grouping. And this is used to create summary totals over a group in a report. So for example, let's say we have a sales report that we created, which displays the detailed data of salespeople and the sales which they made. So here we have that example created as the custom sales by employee report, which I'm now going to select and then click design to edit. So here you can see the salesperson, the order ID, and the sales. And when we preview it and plug in parameter values, we can see that the report shows the name of the salesperson, the order ID, and the amount of that sale. And notice that we have redundant data. Andrew Fuller, who made each one of these sales that we're seeing on this first page, has his name displayed once per record. He might be something we could group. So for example, we could create a grouping on the salesperson field, saying group all the like values, in this case Andrew, or whatever the salesperson's name happens to be, and then we could show all of his orders and the sales amount, and then over the grouping, in this case Andrew, we could say sum all of the sales to create a calculated field over the grouping. Now, to create a data grouping on the salespeople field, we have to create groups for each field by which we would like to create a data grouping. And when you create a data grouping, you can also create a group header and a group footer as two additional bands in the report. You can then create a calculated field in the group footer that would total the value of the sales field for each unique grouping and display the subtotal in the group footer. So this will be an extremely useful feature. Now to create a grouping in your report, you have to click the sorting and grouping button in the database toolbar, which is right next to the toolbox or you may select View from the menu bar and choose Sorting and Grouping. This will launch the Sorting and Grouping dialog box. Here you would click into the first blank row in the Field Expression column and select the name of the field by which we wish to group the data. Also note it could be an expression that you would enter by hand. Click to the right into the sort order and here you select the order of sorting for each unique value in that particular field. So ascending order or descending order. In the group properties section, at the bottom of the dialog box, click into the group header text box and select yes from the drop down that appears to add a group header as a new section to your report if desired. Likewise, you can click into the group footer and also choose yes to display a footer for that particular grouping. You can use the Group On text box to select how you wish to create the groups within the selected field. You can group on each unique value, which is how this usually behaves and is the default choice, or you could select just a few prefix characters or an interval in previous versions of selected characters. Only if you select prefix characters or interval do you need to then specify the number based on the interval of selected characters. So for example, if you had a field, you could group it by the value of the first three characters in the field being the same, and that could be a group. Although it's not standard, it is possible. Also at the bottom, it asks whether or not we want to keep the groups together on one page. You can choose No, which ignores groupings and breaks pages whenever you run out of printable area on the page. You can also choose Whole Group, which tries to print all of the group information once per page. Or you can choose First Interval, or with First Detail, which prints the detailed data per group if it can fit both the group header and at least one detail record on the same page. Now you can create multiple groupings if desired. However, any secondary groups must be smaller groupings within the larger group. So for example, if we had region for salespeople, and we had that in the detail records, my outer group would be region, and then within each region I could group the salespeople, but I'd have to do it in that order. 
So when you're finished setting and any grouping options that you want, just click the X in the upper right corner of the sorting and grouping dialog box to then return to the report. Now things that would be put into the salesperson header would repeat once for each grouping. So for example, I could just move the salesperson field by clicking and dragging it right up into that particular section. So that way we won't have to see the name of the salesperson repeating over and over again. Also, in some types of reports, if you didn't want the labels themselves to repeat for each one of your fields, you could cut the labels and then paste them into the page header or a group header and then move them over the field, placing the data field, which will appear in the actual details section, underneath it. and then we can also bring up the detail section so we don't have as much wasted room. In the salesperson footer you could even create a calculated field and we'll look at how we can do that in the next lesson. For now we're just going to save our changes. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com slash free.